I was sitting in this bar. You know, one of those bars that you just have to visit. One of those places where truly beautiful and successful people should meet. Yes, there were some like that here. Although they were a minority, they dominated the place in a relaxed manner, fluttering around, hugging other cool people, being at ease with themselves. They seemed to know everyone, were best friends with everyone, just loved everyone. Well, not all of them, of course, but at least all the other cool people. And then there were others no one. Moderately attractive, or at least not repulsive. They gathered in small, motionless groups and did not flutter around, as well-known, truly beautiful people did. And then there was a sad reminder. The unfortunate ones who tried to hold on to their places so as not to mix with anyone. They tried desperately not to attract attention to themselves because they thought that everyone could immediately see that they did not belong here, that everyone could see their true self-doubt. Their fears were unfounded. No one noticed them anyway. They were only obstacles for other, more confident people. They just made the place seem less empty. Yes, I was one of them. No, not the beautiful ones. Not even from the group of invisible mediocrities. I was one of those who really didn't belong here. I took a seat at the bar and was busy trying not to embarrass myself and look like I was having a good time. The problem was that I didn't really have anything to do other than feel insecure. There was absolutely nothing, and it was scary. You can't sit in a place like that and just do nothing. It would have been awkward if someone noticed that I wasn't doing anything, but luckily that didn't happen. A couple of friends said they wanted to meet me here, and I showed up like a lamb, not knowing it was one of those bars, and to make matters worse, my friends hadn't even shown up yet. So I desperately clung to the drink in my left hand and watched the crowd, trying to look like a sophisticated observer, like a knowledgeable person staying in the background, and not like the shy guy that I really was and who was afraid of being exposed. I would really like to have the looks, confidence, or charm to be one of those. The ones everyone wants to be like. Let's take this guy, for example. Over six feet tall, blonde, tanned, hulk-muscled, with teeth wide enough to temporarily blind you. And he tried damn hard to make sure everyone here saw them all at all times, including the natives. Although I really liked the comic book characters he resembled, I already hated him. Mainly because I couldn't find the slightest flaw in it. After all, you can usually always console yourself with the fact that you find shortcomings. Yes, of course, she is beautiful, but it is already clear that she is a selfish bitch. Sure, he's muscular, but look at his teeth. Yes, he's handsome, but he looks as dumb as a loaf of bread, and his hair is already thinning. The real problem was truly impeccable people like this guy. He was just a dream ship and even seemed witty and sweet. Asshole. Why shouldn't the genetic lottery be a little fairer, distribute assets a little more evenly? And let's not even talk about the bomb that was next to him. Any fashion model, seeing this woman, would cower in shame and change jobs. No, not a beautiful girl. No, it wasn't a girl at all. She was quite tall and built like an Amazon warrior. No, she was not a beauty at all. She was a magnificent, beautiful goddess and she pressed her lips to his, as if he were God's gift to humanity. Damn it. I really hated it. Hated them both. Shit, where were my friends? I still felt completely out of place here, as if I simply had no right to be in the same room with these people. Just look at that ass. What woman can rightfully have such an ass and show it off in public? This ass alone was enough to drive any man crazy, even without the slightest chance of touching it and surviving it and she made it worse by wearing this ridiculously short pair of tight hot pants. Did I mention that life isn't fair? Maybe yes. I looked around and saw that practically everyone was looking at them, not only the simpletons, but also the party. These two were clear winners of the human genome lottery, and I asked myself, what would it be like to be one of them? Or at least be close to them. And then it got even worse. Mr. Biddy Universe turned and scanned the crowd, all the non-existent guys like me faded under his gaze. I wanted to disappear like a cockroach when the light turns on. Surely he will immediately notice that I am uncomfortable here, that I'm completely alone, that no one talks to me, that no one notices me, that I don't belong here. Hell, he'd be right. 
Now he looked me straight in the eyes, scanned my body with his light blue eyes, and began to smile. Bastard. I felt like I was doing something illegal by being here, desecrating this trendy place with my boring, uncool presence. He patted the Amazon goddess on the shoulder, and the situation immediately worsened. He pointed in my direction, and although I desperately wanted to, I couldn't look away. God, how beautiful she was. Exciting. She looked at me, at him, back at me and frowned. I had to agree with her. If I were her, I would also frown when I see myself here. Luckily, she soon turned away from me and began talking to her godlike companion, shaking her head. They even seemed to get into some kind of light argument, which surprised me a little. The Olympian gods weren't supposed to argue, were they? They simply had to watch the antics of us mortals with a contemptuous smile. The fact that their lives were a little less ideal gave me a small but definite feeling of satisfaction. But this feeling did not go so far as to make me give up the dream of exchanging their lives for my own. I looked away from the model couple and pretended to study the bottles behind the bartender again. It seemed to me that this way I would be invisible until my damn friends finally saw fit to grace this place with their long-awaited appearance, and we could simply escape to a more suitable place. Sorry. Wow, what a nice female voice. He was actually so nice that I decided to give her the seat she no doubt asked for before I even turned around. Shit. It was her. I felt the blood drain from my upper body and my ability to speak evaporated. Mm. It sounded eloquently. My name is Tina. Ah, and you. Um, of course, you can borrow it. Now she looked embarrassed. Place. You can borrow it. What place? I'm asking your name. What? Your name. Surely you have it. Thomas. Ah, uh, you see, Tom. Everyone just calls me Tom. Yes, Tom. I was still a little embarrassed by her presence. Okay, Tom. We are making progress. I can feel it. You were even able to remember and pronounce your name. She giggled slightly, and it was surprisingly cute. It gave her a decidedly non-threatening appearance. She seemed almost, well, human, even charming. Stop that, I thought. Don't turn it into a ridiculous cliché falling in love or something like that. You see, Tom, we have some problems. A deep and very masculine male voice suddenly broke my trance state. Unbeknownst to me, her companion joined us. Hell, everything happened unnoticed while she was talking to me. I'm Ralph, Tina's husband. You see, I love her very much. And she just turned 25 years old. Why is he telling me all this, I wondered. And you, of course, know how difficult it is to find a suitable gift for your woman. Having no experience of real long-term relationships, I didn't really understand this, but wisely kept my mouth shut. Well, I didn't seem to cope with the task. I bought her no, let's just skip it. It was a ridiculous gift, and she was a little upset. I'm furious. What? I was furious, Ralph. I got very angry. Yes, okay, I got furious. She was furious, very furious, and I kind of made her a promise. She'll get any gift she wants if I can arrange it. Well, financially, legally, and so on, you know. Hmm, okay. This was my only contribution to the discussion, and I desperately hoped that I had managed to hide my growing confusion. Why was this stranger telling me that he couldn't find the right birthday gift? Why was she looking at me almost expectantly? Damn, is this even the reality I'm in right now? It seems that no, none of this made even remote sense. I expected someone to shout at any moment, cut, and will make me out to be the victim of a prank. And that's where you come into play, he said. What? Could this evening get any stranger? Where were my friends when I needed them? Now I was desperately looking for some kind of exit strategy. I finally found the flaw I was looking for. These people were clearly crazy. I chose my gift. Sex with another man, just once. I wasn't drinking when she accidentally said that. Fortunately. Otherwise, I would have spread my drink evenly throughout the room. I was still coughing when she calmly continued. Ralph, of course, was forced to agree. It was a desire that clearly did not go beyond the certain limits he had set. Certain restrictions, I thought. This woman was not a mindless slut. 
but to speak in such a tone about the openness of marriage to extramarital sex was, of course, strange. Yes, I had to agree, but I didn't have to like it. My condition was that I could choose the guy and that I could watch the whole thing if I wanted. Is it true? My monosyllabic answers probably led to the fact that they already considered me a complete idiot. Of course, what did you expect? Of course, I will not allow a man who can give me any competition to have sex with her. Anna, you know, this, of course, is not easy for me. But I know I screwed up, and that's part of my repentance. But I won't let this jeopardize my marriage. That's why I need a completely unattractive man. Unattractive, ordinary, not a charmer, not a seducer. In general, there is no competition. What a strange story. But I finally understood why they were telling me this, and, frankly, hearing the undeniable truth in such a presentation was quite offensive. You know, Tom, I agreed to Ralph's terms. I was even surprised that he agreed at all. Well, at that moment I was in a good mood. I drank a little and really regretted the gift for her. As I said, this is my punishment. And you deserve it for that shitty gift, honey. In general, I agreed that he would choose a guy and be present. But I also set a condition. The guy at least doesn't have to be stunningly ugly. Okay, but what are you doing here with me then? I exclaimed. She looked at me dumbfounded and started laughing. She really thought it was incredibly funny, but Ralph and I knew it wasn't. I just saw myself as a freak. Tina. She was still laughing. Tina. What? He's serious. What? Come on. You don't look like a model. And I'd rather you were a little taller. But at least you're not shorter than me, so it's okay. And yes, you could use some extra muscle. But Tom, of course you can handle it. I'm not too picky, it's just for one-time sex. You won't refuse. You're not that ugly. Okay, but he's not handsome. Obviously, Ralph. You don't usually like those, do you? What? Never. Whether this is true or not, it did become quite offensive. But I endured and nevertheless stayed. Of course, I stayed because I had a chance to get closer to the woman of my dreams. But I still didn't entertain the thought of having sex with her. That would be too much. I would just prepare myself for a huge disappointment. But simply touching or even kissing her would be enough reward for this ongoing humiliation. Their motives were clear enough. She had every reason to portray me as an ugly piece of shit, as it would calm her husband's fears. His motives were equally obvious. He certainly had no interest in praising a guy who was about to become his competition. These thoughts helped me maintain at least some modicum of self-respect. But would you have sex with him? Well, it's certainly not a dream ship, but it'll do. Okay, baby, repeat after me. I'm an ugly weak little dude who can't satisfy a real woman. Sue me, I really wanted to get into this goddess's panties, and I really did. I'm a pathetic guy who can't satisfy a woman. He smiled smugly, while she had the grace to look a little embarrassed. This is childish, dear. Okay, Tina, I think I can live with you and Tom having sex, even though it will still hurt. Just don't forget to use a condom, okay? I know, and I really appreciate it. I know how much you love me and how strong you are. Tina, I still don't understand this. I must be enough for you. This guy suddenly turned out to be surprisingly insecure, even a little whiny. I couldn't blame him. If I were him, I would have killed myself on the spot. But I was still a little puzzled. Uh, guys, not now, my dear Ralph. We can talk about this later. You have nothing to fear. I am yours and will remain yours. Guys, yes, Tom, Tina asked. What does all of this mean? That means you're going to have sex with her, dude. You won't make love to her. You won't romanticize with her. No candlelight dinners. No hugs, no kisses. Just simple, quick, old-fashioned sex. No. What do you mean? They were both clearly taken aback by my reaction, and to be honest, so was I. I am not interested. Are you completely crazy? I cursed internally to myself. But that wasn't the case, it wouldn't work. You are crazy, or maybe you're gay. No, Ralph, I'm not gay. Have you looked at her lately? She's so sexy. Yes, I noticed. 
but it still won't work. At least not in the way you described. No kisses, no hugs, no romance. Sorry, how can this work? So do you need this? Candles, kisses, hugs. Damn, this is disgusting. I offer you the sex of your life, and you come up with such unmanly things. Are you sure you're not gay? Sorry, I forgot. You seem like a weakling. Yes, I imagine you like this kind of thing. In fact, I didn't even know what I liked. Okay, I wasn't a virgin, but at 24 I wasn't a Casanova either. My extreme shyness made it very difficult to use my male equipment the way it was intended. But I've read a lot on the subject and watched quite a few how-to videos online. Of course, exclusively for research purposes. He's right, Ralph. I don't love him and never will, but sex the way you describe it won't work. Okay, do what you want, but I'll get it first. You will get it after me. Ralph, honey, we have a deal. It will be better for you too. He will be able to observe and learn. She just rolled her eyes. Okay, let's end this farce, okay? This little caricature of a man poses no threat to me. It seemed to me that he was whistling something in the dark. But I was glad that he acted like a jerk. It made everything easier from a moral point of view. I felt a little uneasy about sex with a married woman. Okay, I'm in. But I will lead in sex, I said boldly. Agreed, she answered quickly, keeping a calm face. Great, just great. Now he was being sarcastic, and that didn't help make him any nicer. But you won't do it in our bed. I'll have to ritually burn it later, but it's almost new. Where do you live, weakling? Just a few hundred meters from here. Crap. Wow, that speaks volumes about a completely miserable person. Surely he regretted that he had not come up with a better gift for her. Whatever he gave her, his punishment seemed unreasonably harsh. But on the other hand, I didn't know them well enough to judge. We walked to my apartment, which was very close, in tense silence. I walked ahead, and all the time he hugged her like a owner. For such a masculine stallion, he was acting a little obsessive. She reciprocated his feelings, probably to reassure him. After that, we spent about five hours in the elevator. At least that's what it seemed like. There was tension in the air as Tina and Ralph stood in different corners. No one said a word. Everyone looked at the floor or the ceiling, as it should be according to the unwritten law in elevators. It was necessary to avoid direct eye contact with Ralph at all costs. Instead, I quickly looked into Tina's gorgeous eyes, and she smiled intensely. She didn't seem to be expecting it at all, which didn't help calm my nerves. The situation was simply strange. After what felt like an eternity, the elevator door opened and Ralph, and I tried to get out at the same time. He took this opportunity to roughly push me out of the way. I stumbled slightly, desperately trying to retain some dignity and not fall to the floor. I barely managed it, but I embarrassed myself by performing a strange dance with my arms and legs. Tina looked at me almost in pain, and Ralph grinned. If everything went right, by the end of the evening, I would have fucked the woman of my dreams, but at the cost of what little self-respect I had. We walked into my large living room, which had a stunning view of the city. We're talking about a wall with one huge window, and the whole room looked like it was taken from some modern furniture catalog. I certainly wasn't filthy rich, but I had a very good income, a luxurious apartment, and I could work from home. Apart from the lack of female companionship, my life was quite normal. Oh wow, they were both quite impressed, although I couldn't understand why. Sure, it was a nice place, but it belonged to an unremarkable guy. They were lucky, beautiful people. They stood by the large picture window, looking out at the city lights, holding hands and sharing what seemed like a romantic moment. I felt almost like an intruder in my own apartment. Anyone want something to drink? It was time to bring them out of their reverie. And what? Yes, Tom, that would be great. Maybe you have white wine. Certainly. Beer. While I bought them drinks, I tried to calm my nerves a little. I still had the impression that she was too beautiful to be around someone like me. I had a brief vision that the universe would simply collapse if I touched it, because it would undoubtedly break some law of physics. And to be honest, I was also a little intimidated by her mere presence. 
I just hoped that in the future this pressure would not interfere with the functioning of my manhood. Quite a nice apartment. It seems you don't fit in here. Thank you. I tried to ignore his rude remarks, which seemed like the best way to avoid giving him any pleasure. Okay, let's start by giving you a free lesson on how to properly please a woman. She seemed not to be pleased with his behavior, but she tolerated it, probably because she was well aware of how difficult the situation was for him. Okay, please follow me to the guest bedroom. No, no, boy, not in the guest bedroom. What? We'll take your bed. He wanted to hurt me in any way, but I didn't care. With his permission, I was going to have sex with his wife, the woman of my dreams. I just had to remember that, and everything was fine. Okay, follow me. My bedroom was much more impressive than the guest bedroom, so I was happy with this choice. It had the same panoramic window overlooking the adjacent park. Since it was the top level of the tallest building in the area, it still provided some privacy. The room also had a huge transparent window near the ceiling. On such a cloudless night, you could see the stars and the moon from the bed. Ralph hardly noticed this and had already begun to undress, but Tina was completely delighted. She just looked at the ceiling with her mouth open. This is true. Do you like it, Tina? Tom, I can't believe this. What's up there? Honey, we can start right now. Now I will demonstrate to him how to have sex with my woman. This is so wonderful, Tom. There seemed to be tears in her eyes. I liked this window and always thought that women would like it too. But I didn't have anyone here. Shyness, you know. Tina, hello, are you here with me? We can start having sex right now. Oh yes, sorry, Ralph. She began to undress without any noticeable anticipation. She seemed to be preparing for homework. But God, what a body emerged from under those clothes. The thing is, every time I see a woman, I imagine what those parts of the body that I cannot see will look like. If I see a beautiful mane from the back, I imagine a beautiful face from the front. If I see a beautiful neckline, I already imagine naked breasts in their ideal shape. The problem is that reality often does not match these images. When the owner of a beautiful mane turns around, the face is often not as perfect as I expected, and the few women I've had sex with have looked more attractive in clothes than in the nude. So I tended to fill in the blanks with unrealistically optimistic ideas. In this case, for the first time, this strategy was completely justified. Tina's body was simply amazing. Unfortunately, Ralph's body was just as flawless and exceptional. These people were suitable for each other, it was quite obvious. They were both the pinnacle of the gene pool. Perfect toned and muscular bodies, suitable for any sportswear catalog. Her physique and muscles intimidated me a little, although she was no taller than me, especially now that she had kicked off her very high heels. He was already excited and came up to show me his manhood. I wasn't usually particularly interested in the dignity of other men, but I felt obligated to give him at least the minimum of polite attention. Not bad, right? I bet you can't compete with him, weakling. What was he talking about? He had an ordinary instrument. What should I have said? Fortunately, he didn't seem to be expecting an answer. He beckoned her onto my bed. I expected him to worship this feminine miracle, to appreciate her perfect body, to please her as best he could. That was my first instinct. The reality turned out to be somewhat different. I was stunned. No kissing. No foreplay. He just took her, and it was obvious that she was not ready for this. What the hell was he thinking? How was this supposed to work? This mystery was soon resolved. Nothing worked. She tried to hide her pain, but unlike him, I noticed it. He took her mercilessly. Didn't anyone tell him that with this approach many women couldn't get pleasure? Apparently not, as he continued to take her mercilessly. From an athletic point of view, it was impressive. His muscles were well-defined and very attractive. He had brilliant control over his body. Basically, he would be great in any adult film. But this was not a film for adults, but real life. The goal here was not to look good, but to please your partner. He was right, it was a lesson of sorts, a lesson in how not to please a woman. The final touch was that he looked around for a mirror. In its narcissistic way, it was wonderful. 
Tina, from time to time, smiled encouragingly at him, but she was as far away from climax as the moon. She looked briefly into my eyes, and a sudden understanding arose between us. She was clearly desperate. Perhaps she even doubted herself. She had probably never climaxed, at least not with him, and she wondered if it was her fault. Perhaps she wanted to know what it was like to have one. I suddenly felt sorry for her, and it surprised me, and I vowed to use my time with her to please her as much as possible, at least with my limited knowledge in this area. She deserved to experience this at least once, although I wasn't sure I could do it. A more experienced man would have been better, but her options were clearly limited. Finally, Ralph began to grunt. Come on, Tina, I'm almost ready. Did he really expect that after such pathetic sex, she would climax on command? What reality did he live in? Tina made appropriate sounds that may or may not mean climax. I had to admire her. She tried not to lie, openly pretending, but also not to show her pleasure. She clearly loved him and didn't want to hurt him. I guess she shouldn't have worried because he didn't seem to know such subtleties. He even increased his efforts, grunted and collapsed on top of her. Ah, that was good. She didn't comment. Okay, weakling, now it's your turn. Let's see how you can handle this. He simply rolled out of bed and went to the bathroom, ignoring her. I saw your problem, I said quietly while he was away. I love him, you know. Yes, I see it. There were tears in her beautiful eyes. I don't want to hurt him. I know. But do you need to have an idea? Yes. I need to know, she said in an almost desperate tone. This has nothing to do with that shitty gift. I'm not such a bitch in such matters. I just need to know. I may not be the best choice. I don't have much experience. You are my only choice. I'm surprised he agreed at all. And you definitely have more experience than me. He was the only one so far. Childhood friends? Yes. I sighed. A relationship like theirs was something special, and I knew full well that they would be hurt by what happened, and I would feel ashamed of my role in it. But I couldn't or didn't want to do anything about it. She must have an idea, and I desperately wanted to touch her, kiss her, worship her, make love to her. As soon as he left the bathroom, she also stood up to clean herself up. Tina, you should look at this bathroom. It's bigger than our apartment. Holy crap. He waited a few seconds for her to leave. Okay, dude, I'm leaving. I'm not going to look at it. No real man should look at this. Remember, only once, and with a condom. She is completely mine, and for the rest of your life you can dream about this night, wanting to repeat it. But that won't happen. She still won't like your skinny body. You know? Ah, damn. He looked a little upset and simply turned around and left the apartment. Where is Ralph? he suddenly decided to leave. She looked a little sad. Yes, it will probably be better that way. I wouldn't want to cause him that kind of pain. But I need to know, I really do. I know. Come to me, please. She obediently approached me, lowering her head slightly. I carefully lifted her chin and boldly planted a gentle kiss on her perfect lips while trying to get rid of her clothes. As soon as I freed both hands, she responded enthusiastically to my caresses, which greatly encouraged me. For someone who gained knowledge about this subject mostly from the internet, I was under the impression that I wasn't that bad. As usual, thorough research helped a lot. We ended up on my bed, where I was finally able to fully explore her body. She also began to care for me, but I decisively laid her on the bed so that I could start kissing and worshipping every part of her body. She was very into it, moaning, squirming, and saying all sorts of stupid things like, Oh my God, or Yes, Yes. It was great, I was able to give this woman the pleasure she deserved, and it gave me an incredible thrill. After some time, she forcibly turned me onto my back and began to pay attention to me. We gave each other affection, and we both thoroughly enjoyed what we were doing. Take me now, please. Please, Tom. This dream woman was almost begging to be taken. More precisely, so that I take it. Talk about an ego boost. I knew these were unusual circumstances, and that under normal circumstances she would not have looked twice at me. But I was determined to make the best of it for both of us. Still, I was going to refuse her. I wasn't going to fuck her, I was going to worship her. 
After a short, playful struggle that made us both laugh, I looked into her eyes and admired her perfect face and slowly began to take her. To my surprise, she also looked at my face and didn't even show much disgust. She must have read my expression. You know, you're not ugly. I wasn't sure I should discuss my appearance. This could really ruin my mood. Really? Not at all. You're not as perfect as Ralph, he's the most handsome man I've ever seen. But you're far from ugly. On the contrary, if you do something about your appearance, you can become quite attractive. About. I wasn't sure it wasn't just encouraging sex talk. I just let him make fun of you without objecting to calm him down. I'm sorry about that. It's really hard for him. Yes, I can imagine. Sorry, I just had to say it. I really like looking at you. You have beautiful eyes. What? What is she talking about? This was getting a little absurd. My eyes were just well eyes. Now please continue. This is better than I dared to dream. It's so. Oh, Tom. To my embarrassment, she began to cry. Wow, that wasn't quite what I expected. But seeing her so emotional was erotic in its own way. I continued to do what I had been doing before our short conversation to bring her thoughts back to the present, and I succeeded. After a while, I realized that she was already close. When I felt she was almost there, I redoubled my efforts, which caused her to immediately reach the finish line, and she climaxed. Her entire muscular body shook, and she screamed like a banshee. Yes, I felt like a real stud. It was all very tiring, and I myself received little direct pleasure. But just seeing her reaction was enough, and it was too good to be true. I certainly didn't have Ralph's body, but I could have been more empathetic and sensitive. I was still surprised at how easily I was able to read her reactions. She was almost like an open book to me, and so I could play her like an instrument. A very sensitive and beautiful instrument. She looked at me very seriously, took my face in both hands, and kissed me passionately. I felt that she was already crying openly, and my nose became a little wet. Looking back on my life, I can say that it was the best moment I could remember. After a while, she relaxed a little and loosened her vice-like grip on my head. She looked into my eyes with an expression that seemed almost loving. Then she suddenly began to look worried, perhaps noticing how little I had done so far for my own pleasure. She unceremoniously flipped us both over, and I again marveled at her physical strength. She was determined to repay me. She was a woman on a mission. It was an incredible honor and joy for me to experience this. She looked into my eyes. None of the cover girls seemed all that beautiful to me, and, predictably, I climaxed too quickly. She pressed herself tightly against me, and oops, we might have forgotten the condom Ralph asked for. Tina rushed at me and immediately began showering me with kisses. I almost burst out laughing she was so happy and enthusiastic. After what seemed like half an hour, she finally let me go, and we lay on the bed, side by side, completely exhausted. I looked at my watch, and to my surprise, we had been busy for almost an hour. Time flies when you have sex with a goddess. Not that this rule had anything to do with my future life. After we relaxed a little, her mood suddenly became a little gloomy. I thought I knew what was going on. Tina, you shouldn't be upset. I know. Is this not what you expected? No, that's not it. That's the problem. Everything was better, much better. You really love Ralph, don't you? Yes, more than anything else. And sex that is so good with someone else looks even worse with him. Yes, I never climaxed with him. I had no idea what everyone was talking about. I guessed about it. Did you guess? Well, the only reason for your strange request, causing pain to the person you clearly love, and potentially endangering your marriage, had to be something very important. She just nodded. You obviously love him, which is not surprising since he is a real dream ship. So what is the reason for you wanting sex with someone like me? Sex with him is obviously so bad that you probably even doubt yourself. Yes, she sobbed and fell to her knees. I tried to console her. Tina, the problem is definitely not you. You are a very good, very responsive lover. But that doesn't solve anything, right? The man you love is still not the same. Now you know this for sure, although until today you still had doubts. 
She just nodded pathetically. The problem is that he is a little selfish, but that can be cured. You can teach him the subtleties of lovemaking. The bigger problem is his outdated views on male behavior. Everything that gives pleasure to a woman in his eyes is crap for faggots, unmanly. This will be difficult to change. Maybe counseling will help you. I already talked about this. Let me guess. He doesn't see problems in your marriage. He's not crazy, and he doesn't need this pathetic counseling. Yes, more or less. So what's your plan? I don't have one. I'm afraid he will never change. Now I can leave him at any time if I get too upset. But I love him too much to do that. Once children appear in the family, the problem of care will be much greater. And I'm also afraid that then he will care even less about my sexual needs. Oh, you don't have to worry. I don't think he can do anything worse. She laughed briefly and bitterly. Yes, you're probably right. So what can I do? Nothing. Remember this wonderful evening with you. Except that the man I love is a lousy lover. Hey, this is confidential, okay? Yes, sure. Don't worry. I'm not an asshole. I know. You know, Ralph isn't that bad either. He was just offended and unsure of himself today. Yes, I guessed about it. So are we done? Yes, Tom. Thank you so much. It was like a dream for me. Me too. Thank you. I will never forget this evening. With tears in her eyes, she ran to the bathroom, cleaned herself up, got dressed in record time, and ran out of my apartment before I could find suitable parting words. I was surprised to realize that my face was also wet. After that, I lay awake for an eternity, trying to comprehend what had just happened. She was extraordinarily beautiful, and she was certainly great in bed. But what surprised me was that she was so open, so sweet, so attractive. I was almost glad I wouldn't see her again. I would definitely fall in love with her without having the opportunity to have her, to make her mine. She really was too tough for me. She was perfect, just like Ralph, except for one annoying flaw. My plan was to try to treat the whole thing as a strange, but very nice one-off episode that I would look back on with pleasure for the rest of my life. But there was nothing in it that would really change my life or my views on the world. Of course, things didn't turn out quite like that. The next morning I went to the hairdresser to get a decent haircut. I cultivated my nerdy, casual air, but I knew it was as ridiculous as Ralph's strange views on proper male behavior during sex. Disregarding one's appearance was not a nice quirk, it was simply immature. By evening I had a new haircut and put on new clothes. It was time to change something. The meeting with Tina became a wake-up call for me. My self-esteem was still intact from the experience, and I almost managed to hook up twice with the girls I met in the city. Of course, before things got too serious, I would screw things up by hesitating too long or not finding the right words. Some of my self-doubt may have disappeared, but I was still painfully shy. Two weeks after my big adventure, I was sitting by the fireplace and looking at the flames, which was the only light in my house at that time. My mood was gloomy. My attempts to push Tina out of my mind were largely unsuccessful. Everything would be fine if she was just beautiful and sexy. The real problem was that she turned out to be a sensitive, caring, and loving person. Damn it. I kept thinking about our wonderful lovemaking, replaying it over and over again in my mind and torturing myself with it. My wonderful sad mood was interrupted by the doorbell. No, not now. I couldn't see anyone right now, especially my friend Tim, who had gotten me into this situation in the first place by not showing up at the bar on time. The damn doorbell rang again. Shit. I realized I should probably do something. I finally got my ass off the floor and moved towards the door when another bell rang. What happened to Tim? Usually he was too high to be in such a hurry. I opened the door and was about to scold him when something tall, beautiful, and decidedly feminine flew into my arms, almost knocking me off my feet. The door slammed shut without my participation and soft lips pressed against mine. A wonderful smell hit my nose and my chest pressed against my chest. In general, the situation could have been worse. Don't talk, she said, breaking her own rule. Let's just go to your bedroom. I simply nodded. She was right. Nothing needed to be said. 
This time I extended the foreplay long enough to bring her to climax. After that we experimented. Any position was acceptable as long as I could see her beautiful face, which turned me on the most. There was no doubt about it. She was tall and muscular, she was much more beautiful than me. But I completely dominated her, and she knew it. And everything I did was only to increase her pleasure, seeing this naked beauty in ecstasy was reward enough for me. She came to the finish line like crazy and moaned loudly. The sight was so erotic that I eventually followed her too. After hugging and kissing a little, we lay in bed in companionable silence. I felt completely at ease with her. I was no longer intimidated by her appearance. We were friends, but something was bothering me, and finally I had to break this relaxed mood. Tina, I don't feel comfortable with him being a cuckold. It's just wrong and not really my style. Yes, I also feel terrible for cheating on him. I love my husband very much, you know? I know. He has been my best friend since childhood. He protected me from bullies at school. Fine. I will never leave him. Fine. Suddenly she burst into tears. I have to go. She practically ran away from my apartment again. This was becoming a habit for her. I felt like a brute for ruining her mood like that. I wasn't too surprised when I found her at my door again a week later. This suited me quite well, since at that time I was not thinking about anything else. Most of the time I just mindlessly stared out the window or at the wall daydreaming about her. After an enthusiastic greeting, we again made fantastic love and again started talking about how uneasy we were. She complimented Ralph again, and I again pointed out that I wasn't usually one to have sex with married women. This conversation suspiciously began to resemble more of a ritual than the real truth. Her visits became more and more frequent until we were making love almost every day. The sex did not get worse. The excitement did not fade. On the contrary, we got to know each other better, and sex only benefited from this. Everything got even hotter. I still felt uneasy about the moral aspects, but there was no way I could resist her. She was completely torn and cried often. We both understood that this was wrong, but everything grew into a full-fledged long-term romance. Another thing that happened was that we just enjoyed spending time together outside of the bedroom. We developed a casual, relaxed relationship. Whenever she could spend time with me, meaning when Ralph was away for some reason, we would cook, watch movies, just hug or talk. For obvious reasons, we were never seen together in public, but inside my apartment we were almost like a happy couple. Now we are preparing lasagna together. We were both completely naked, relaxed after a long session of sex, freshly washed and hungry. And again that damn doorbell. Open the damn door, slut. This voice was slightly muffled by the door, but we both immediately knew who it was. I looked questioningly into her eyes, and she nodded sadly. Tom, let's at least get dressed, okay? Good idea. We quickly got dressed. She in the clothes she arrived in, I in ordinary trousers. Then, with my heart in my sneakers, I opened the door. Tina was not visible. She disappeared into the bedroom. Ralph. Volume. He looked pretty excited. Is Tina here? Ralph, what do you want here? Tina, he shouted, ignoring my question. I was about to shoo him away when, to my surprise, she appeared behind me. I'm here. He instantly lost his composure. It was terrible to watch. I saw his spirit break right before my eyes. So is it true? He was almost crying, and for some reason that would be the worst thing. I really hoped that he would save us from this, and he also hoped that Tina would deny everything, at least for his own sake. Maybe he'll tell him some story about how we're just friends. Yes. This statement shocked Ralph as much as it shocked me. What does it mean? Why did she want Ralph to know about us? Did she want to confess? Did she want to force herself to break up with me in this way? Did she want to break up with Ralph, no matter how unlikely it seemed? You're a bitch. Fucking, adulterous, traitorous bitch, he said in a strangely sad voice. I know, she answered sadly. You are heartless, changeable, worthless. I felt his mood change. This was a desperate man, and he was about to get seriously angry. I know. I'm sorry. It's a pity. It's a pity. 
What does it mean? It doesn't mean a damn thing. It does not change anything. What do you even regret? For fucking him? For fucking this worthless, skinny buffoon? No. No? What does it mean? I'm sorry I hurt you. You are a bitch. Slut. Vast, worthless slut. He was already really screaming. I was glad that the offices below my apartment were deserted at this time of day. Ralph, I'm sorry I hurt you. But I don't regret having sex with Tom. She was surprisingly calm. Even though the meaning of their words was harsh, her words were calming, as if she were talking to a beloved child. Obviously, she deeply empathized and felt the pain of the person she loved very much. But she obviously decided to be completely honest with him. I respected that, but still doubted her wisdom. While I was still looking at her, something out of the blue hit me on the chin. He finally hit me, I thought, tumbling backwards. I was amazed how long he could focus his attention only on her. And since he would certainly never hit her, I was the most likely target for any violence from the start. As soon as I hit the floor, I saw her worried face from the worm's point of view. I'm very sorry, Tom. It's all my fault, she said, while Ralph started kicking me. She then proceeded to physically stop him from causing me more pain. Leave him alone, Ralph. Why should I do this, slut? Why should I do anything for you? Stop it, or I'll stay here today. Her voice remained eerily calm despite the chaos around her. I had to admire her for that. She was definitely the kind of person you would want to have around in case of an emergency. Her words stopped him immediately. You bitch, why should I care? She walked up to him and hugged him. He started sobbing like a baby, and that was something I couldn't bear. Okay, him hitting me was almost expected in his world of male behavior. But seeing a macho guy like him cry really made me feel bad. It's okay, Ralph. I love you. Everything is fine. Her voice was still soothing. Don't leave me, Tina. Do not leave me. Please do not. He seemed so weak compared to this strong woman. No wonder he was afraid of losing her. Tom, we'll go to the guest bedroom if you don't mind. Ralph and I need to talk alone. Of course, I managed to stammer. I examined my face and was relieved to see that I was not seriously injured. I was almost disappointed. It would have relieved me of a huge sense of guilt. I didn't like Ralph, of course, but what Tina and I did was clearly wrong. We were cheating assholes, there's no doubt about it. About half an hour later, they appeared again. Ralph looked a little calm again and even seemed a little embarrassed. Tom, I can't see you anymore, Tina announced, turning to my feet. I had already anticipated this, but actually hearing it was still unpleasant. It's clear. I promised this to Ralph. He wants to forgive me. We really love each other. From now on, I will be an ideal wife. Ralph nodded decisively in the background, which seemed a little unnecessary. Fine. We need our marriage to heal. I need to work hard to win his trust again. I will miss you, but we won't be able to see each other anymore. Never again. This is the end. We are parting forever. Okay, Tina. I understand. I still felt uneasy. Good luck in your marriage. I'll miss you. Be healthy. She walked away, trying to hide the tears in her eyes from Ralph. I didn't feel too good either. To be honest, I knew I would miss her terribly. I had a really bad, extremely bad time ahead of me. For several weeks I was in a gloomy mood and hardly left my apartment. Apart from housework, all I did was read, cook, work and sleep. I was very depressed and realized that I had fallen in love with her a little. Even more than a little, it seemed to me. My thoughts kept returning to her. I really missed her. To be honest, I was head over heels in love with a married woman. The worst case scenario has happened. Four completely miserable weeks after our final goodbyes, my doorbell rang. Tina, I was shocked. Tina, I was overjoyed. I wanted to jump up and do a victory dance just from seeing her again. She put a finger to my lips, silencing me. As requested, I remained completely silent, although it was difficult. I felt like I might burst with joy, as if a big missing part of me was finally there again. To say that the sex that followed was amazing would be a gross understatement. 
Tina was absolutely wild and determined to make up for lost time. It was magical. I was hoping she would stay after this to have a relaxing time, but that wasn't what she had in mind. She looked at me seriously and put her finger to her lips. I wisely remained silent as I watched her shower, get dressed, and leave without saying a word. Strange. But it's definitely better than nothing. Over the following weeks, our disgusting romance flared up with renewed vigor. I still felt awkward about the whole thing, but I was powerless to resist her. She seemed to feel even worse, but obviously couldn't stop either. We simply committed adultery, and it was against the moral standards of both of us. At first, our meetings were limited to sex without words, as if this made cheating more acceptable. After a few meetings, this rule was lifted and everything returned to normal. If what we did can be called normal. Ralph didn't seem to know this time, but that didn't make it any easier for me. About two months have passed since the resumption of our adultery, and we have already established a certain schedule. We spent most Saturdays together, with Ralph playing football and then hanging out with his buddies. It was the best time because we could just spend a few hours together in a relaxed atmosphere. But she also managed to sneak in during her lunch break, usually two or three times a week. My life consisted mainly of two things, spending time with her and waiting for her. The latter was beginning to seem painful. It was Saturday, and I was expecting her at ten in the morning. At eleven I was already worried, and at noon I was on the verge of a nervous breakdown. We agreed that I would not call her under any circumstances, so all I could do was control myself, feeling terrified. Did she want to end the relationship? Did something happen to her? I will never know. No one will ever contact me about it. Finally, the doorbell rang. I'd rather she had my key, but she said she couldn't risk Ralph finding it. Rushing to the door, I saw her standing there with a sad and melancholy look and tears streaming down her beautiful face. Tina, come here, what happened? I hugged her and had to wait for the sobs to subside. We really hurt him. Oh, crap. He knows. Yes. So we will have to separate again. No. No. I felt happy. Was this some kind of obligation towards me? Has she really decided to break up with Ralph? He was furious. He wanted to leave me right away. I was very sad but I agreed that this was a decision we might have to discuss. He didn't expect this, and my answer took him by surprise. He instantly lost his composure and began to beg and ask not to leave him. It was terrible. This handsome, once proud man turned into a pathetic pile due to the fault of an evil bitch, namely me, and her partner in crime, which is me. We looked into each other's eyes. None of us felt proud of what happened. Yes, exactly you. She smiled faintly. It was. Well, let's just say I felt damn guilty. The man I loved was destroyed by my selfish act. And then things got even worse. He basically offered to share me with you unless I left him completely. Oh, crap. I knew it was bad, but internally I couldn't help but feel delighted. Perhaps this meant that she would spend more time with me and yet the nagging feeling of guilt did not leave me. Yeah, it's crap. I asked him if he really wanted an open marriage. Does he want sex too, and is he okay with me having sex with other guys? With other guys? A cold chill ran down my spine. Jealousy? Seriously, am I a jealous cheater? How hypocritical is that? Relax, I'm not going to. I just wanted to know what he wanted. He seems to want to save as much of our relationship as possible, hoping that this is just a passing phase. My continued living in our apartment with him seems to have become a stumbling block. He suggested that he might agree to share me with you if he got most of my time and if we continued to use condoms. What? Yes, I know. He thinks so. Let's not talk about this, please. I still feel bad for this lie, even though it's more of a default lie. In any case, the main thing is that he doesn't want to be a cuckold. This was his greatest fear. I didn't know this word too well, and he explained it to me. It describes a husband whose wife has sex with at least one other man. He said that this problem would be solved if we divorced. I really do not understand. Does he want to save our relationship by divorcing me? Obviously, this is again a kind of male status. 
perhaps the main point is saving his pride. For him, whether he is a cuckold or not seems to be more important than staying married to me. I have no idea what he's thinking. I think he's just confused and overwhelmed. I heard about it. About what? About cuckolds. Everyone seems to have their own definition, and for many guys, being cuckolded is the ultimate humiliation. For Ralph, remaining married seems to be a prerequisite for obtaining this terrible title, so he probably wants to get rid of it this way without getting rid of you. To some extent this makes sense. I can't say that I don't feel sorry for him. Yes, in general, that's how it will be. What? Is it true? Can we start dating openly? Yes. No. Not openly, of course. No one should know about our affair or divorce. Again, status and image in society seem to be important to him. Under these conditions, he agrees that we spend a limited amount of time together. He hopes that in this way our romance will lose its illicit edge and excitement and will soon fizzle out. How do you feel about this? That's just terrible. My marriage just ended. I ruined my marriage with the man of my dreams. It's clear. I didn't like the way that sounded. But on the other hand, I won more time with the other man of my dreams. Seriously, I think it sounded much better. Of course, fool. Needless to say, we had mind-blowing sex after that. And we spent the rest of that Saturday together in our usual relaxed atmosphere until she returned to Ralph late in the evening. As always, I was really sad to see her go. But for some reason this time, it was even harder for me. Previously, she had an affair with me and she returned to her husband, to her house. With the new agreement, I felt that I had a right to some part of it, that I was almost as much a legal spouse as Ralph. But as pleasant as the thought was, it became even more difficult to accept the fact that she was coming back to him at night. Why can't she spend the night with me? Jealousy began to creep into my soul. Knowing that I was a jealous cheater was pure hypocrisy, and it didn't help at all. We continued to live like this for several weeks. We must give Ralph his due he managed to bring the matter to a divorce. He loved her deeply, but did not want to be a cuckolded husband. Since he couldn't stop her and force her to change her behavior, he was consistent enough to follow through, although Tina assured me that it caused him terrible pain. She was hurt too because she still loved him and didn't want him to go through all that. He was devastated, but still tried his best to hold her. It was just as hard for her to watch as it was for him. I was afraid of losing her again during this emotional chaos, but to my great joy, she continued to see me. She spent Saturdays with me, and in the evenings she went to his place to spend the night in clubs. She still did not want to appear with me in public, so as not to embarrass or humiliate him. This irritated me a little, but I soon calmed down when she offered to spend two nights a week with me. Those nights were like a dream for me, but must have been terrible for Ralph. Sometimes there was awkwardness right after she arrived. I knew that Ralph must have been out of his mind when he saw her leave, and the guilt was eating her alive. But good lovemaking, as it turns out, always helps in such a situation. You know, Tina, these overnight bags just suck, I said Tuesday morning as she packed her things before leaving for work. Yes, I know. Collecting these things is a complete pain, and I always forget something. Listen, I have plenty of space in my closets. What? Do you see? I took her to my closet and showed her how pathetic my few clothes looked. I still can't comprehend how huge it is. Yes, there is a lot of space here, even for a beautiful woman's wardrobe. Mm. Tom, are you asking me to constantly have some things in your apartment? Yes. She smiled radiantly. Agreed. True? Wow, so simple. Certainly. Woohoo. Yes, this was it. The first step to getting her to move in with me. But honey, what? Did she call me cute? My blood, by this point, had mostly been replaced by endorphins. I don't even have that many clothes. What? My vocabulary was still a little limited due to the natural drugs in my blood. I have almost no clothes at all. Of course, what woman has it? Smart ass. Seriously, if I split what I have between your house and mine. Ralph's, I won't have enough of either. I'll need at least clothing to work in both places. 
did she call her former home Ralph's house? It just kept getting better and better. Well, then we'll have to make some serious purchases. No problem. Tom, I know that you are quite wealthy. At least I'm assuming you don't have any immediate financial problems, but I wasn't so lucky. I just can't afford that many new clothes. I was still on cloud nine. What? That's the least of our problems, okay? She was starting to look a little annoyed. Tom, I really don't have that kind of money. My account is almost maxed out. Do you have separate accounts? Yes, they always were. It was fairer that way. He likes to spend his money on completely different things. It's clear. How much debt do you have? Tom, I'd rather not talk. It's a lot, and I'm not proud of it, and I'm afraid that you... Stop it, I interrupted her. About 8,000, she admitted shyly. I couldn't help but laugh. Asshole. It's not funny. I never know if I'll get cash from an ATM. Ah, uh, this sucks. Okay, give me your account number. I do not need your money. She looked stubborn, proud, and beautiful. I needed to come up with something urgently. This is not a gift. What should I do for this? Remember, I'm not here for the money. I'm not a slut. There was still doubt on her face. I should have been diplomatic. Things could have gone horribly wrong. I'll transfer some money and buy something with it. You just have to help me buy it. I need a full set of women's clothing, toiletries, cosmetics, everything. All this will remain here in my home. All this will be my property. You can just use it from time to time. Ah, her face lit up. It was a deal she could live with. Shopping on this scale was simply irresistible to her. And I expect nice underwear. Fine. She was clearly resigned to the idea. And Tina. Yes, I don't want you to find yourself in a difficult financial situation. I'm going to translate a little more to help you with account. Not too much, just to help you survive, okay? I don't want you to worry all the time. Okay, she said, smiling timidly like a little girl. Damn, I could really get used to her. So many personalities in one woman. So smart, full of life, full of emotion. Damn, I found myself completely in love with her again. My mind was still in turmoil, so I just spoke. Tina, I love you. What? She was clearly stunned. What does it mean? Have I ruined everything? It looked like she was about to cry. Sorry, I mean maybe I shouldn't have said that. You're stupid. My God. She jumped into my arms and showered me with kisses. I have to go to work. Ah, uh, okay. I expected a reaction, but definitely not this one. See you tomorrow, honey. Cute. Seriously. Um, and by the way, I love you too. And she left. As for me, I was still in shock. Did I really just say I loved her? I knew that I loved her for a long time, but I always avoided telling her about it afraid of pushing her away with such a commitment. And she really not only accepted my confession, but also replied that she loved me too. Wow. I barely touched the ground for the rest of the day. The next day in the afternoon, a beaming Tina came to my door. Let's go. Oh, hi, Tina. What a pleasant surprise. What exactly are you up to? I kept a straight face, feigning ignorance. Asshole. She hit me playfully. Let's go. Today I want to make some serious purchases. Let's go, you lazy bum. I hesitantly followed her to the exit of the building. For some reason I felt unprotected, like in those dreams when you are walking and suddenly notice that you are not wearing pants and everyone around you is staring. The problem was that I wasn't just imagining it. Okay, I was wearing pants, but everyone was really looking at us. Then I calmed down. This is what it means to walk with such a stunning woman like her. I'm just not used to this. But besides the stares of the people around us, something else seemed wrong. It was as if I had left the safety of a cave and stepped out into the open, feeling vulnerable. I had never felt this way when I left my building before. Then it dawned on me, I was in public with Tina. I did something that was strictly prohibited for months. I broke a taboo. She, of course, was completely unperturbed and was in a great mood. A few hours later, I returned with a completely filled car and a euphoric Tina. Just seeing her like this made me incredibly happy. 
La, 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 someone will be lucky today, she sang. I didn't really like her singing technique, but the words sounded quite normal. Will you stay the night? Certainly. I want to spend the night with the man I love. But not with the only man you love, I thought, but wisely remained silent. As we stood in my kitchen drinking soda, I had an idea. I rummaged through the drawer and wordlessly handed her the key. What is this? It's called a key. Smart guy, she laughed. What does it mean? You live here now. Suddenly I had doubts. How will she react to this? Am I repelling her with my impudence? Well, at least sometimes, I retreated. Of course, as much as you want. Either way, you must have the key. I had to stop before I started stuttering completely. Fine. She simply accepted it dispassionately. It didn't matter to her. For me, this was another small sign that she was gradually becoming mine. Now I had the feeling that she was 40% mine and 60% Ralph. At least that's how she distributed her time between us. Little by little, we were able to fill her closet space, and she even started to give my apartment a bit of a feminine touch. We still had great sex and managed to avoid the whole Ralph thing. Everything changed a few months after she accepted the keys. She came into my apartment, clearly upset. What a bastard, she exclaimed. What happened, honey? Ralph. He's dating some bitch. About. What more could I say? Their divorce was final, and unlike her, he honored their wedding vows. He was absolutely flawless, as in all this dirty threesome marriage. I think he did it to make me jealous. And it worked. Of course not. He can have sex. Oh, crap. Don't know. I still love him, you know. I understand, I sighed sadly. I'm sorry. This is so hard for everyone. But he doesn't deserve it. We deserve it. I know. But sometimes he really drives me crazy. What if he loves her? What if she's the only one for him? That would be perfect, I thought, but managed to maintain a calm expression on my face. Does she spend her nights at his house? I use the term intentionally in it. Yes, I think he does when I'm here. I wouldn't mind if you spent more time here with us. So this is what it is, our place? Yes, this is as much your home as it is mine. This is so cute. But you know, I still love Ralph. I can't just leave him like that. Have you thought about condoms? What? For what? I take pills. Of course but you don't know this woman. She can be a little promiscuous. This may be a health problem. Okay, I acted like a bastard. I knew that condoms would make sex with Ralph even less attractive. I hoped that they would help her to lean towards me more, and of course we should have used them from the start. Oh, I understand. Crap. So he could endanger all three of us. Well, I can hardly ask him. Of course, he only does this to annoy me and make me jealous. I really don't want him to think it works. Okay, then please just use condoms with him. I don't want to start using them with you. Oh no, of course not. He and I don't have much sex. We are already more like brother and sister. Hell, it was really hard to hear that they were even having sex. Imagining it was enough to make me feel sick. But I had to remember where we came from I was a lover and had no right to be jealous. I had to be patient and gradually make her mine. I knew from the beginning that it would be difficult, but I was willing to do whatever it took to achieve my dream. She spent more time with me than with him, and that was already a success. But Tom, it's still hard for me to see him disappear into his room with that woman. In your room? Yes, we have separate rooms since the divorce was final. Oh wow, it just keeps getting better and better, I thought as we went to the bedroom to have some fun. The bed attracts us like a magnet, and today was no exception. After another particularly hot sex session, I spoke again. Tina, I love you. I know. I love you too. That's what makes it so difficult. I love Ralph too. Yes, I know. Tina, I'm completely happy with what we have, I lied. But I'm a little annoyed that you still don't want us to be seen in public at least in the evenings. You're still only dating him. Tom, I don't have sex with him anymore. He even has problems with this because he knows that I have much more fun with you. But I really enjoy his communication, and I think I owe him at least that. 
Fine. It's clear. I realized that my jealousy had reached new heights. It seemed that now Ralph was having an affair, that she was going on dates with some other man. But I can do this with you too. It's not that I'm embarrassed to date you. You are not ugly in fact. You are quite an attractive man. I know, but I'm not as attractive as him. Don't make me lie to you. Ralph is probably the most handsome man I've ever seen. I know. Now I felt truly humiliated, although this was the undeniable truth. Don't be upset. I love you. Yes, I know. Is it really necessary to continue having sex with him? Yes, if he is in the mood, I, of course, will not refuse him anything. I'm indebted to him, aren't I? Yes, you're probably right, but it's still unpleasant. This almost never happens anyway. I just went with it like I always did. The long-term goal was important, but when she left our apartment to spend the night with her other man, I was nearly torn apart. I knew all too well how Ralph must have felt when he found out about us. It was painful, very painful. I spent the night afraid that she would choose him again. I was afraid that he would finally improve his sexual skills, and in this case I did not doubt my chances with her. I imagined what they were doing at that moment. Does she kiss him? Are they lying in bed together? Does she whisper sweet words into his ear? In short, I spent the night awake, full of fear and jealousy, as always when she was with him. It really exhausted me. By this time I felt like a husband who had been cuckolded, and it was no fun. After a few weeks, I couldn't stand it anymore. She steadily reduced the number of nights she spent at Ralph's to one or two a week. This relieved my pain a little, but it was still hard. I avoided imagining how Ralph felt as he slowly lost her. But I had to remember my goal, and sparing his feelings would not help me. I felt confident enough to take a little risk. Tina, what do you think about making our relationship exclusive? We already have this opportunity, don't we? Or are you dating someone else? No, I'm not dating, but you are dating. What? Ah, uh, got it. Well, I rarely have sex with him anyway. But if he wants, I'll be there. I'm still indebted to him, and I still love him. You knew what you were getting into from the very beginning. Understand. So, is it normal that I can also have a girlfriend on the side? What? No. She looked angry, but quickly calmed down, understanding the situation. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. See, we have to remember that we are officially cheaters. I was married to Ralph, and somehow I'm still his woman. I hurt him even though he did nothing wrong. I think I still love him. Yes, I know, but it still hurts. Yes, just like we hurt him. Tina, you're not suffering at all here. You have two men to choose from. It is not true. It killed me that I hurt Ralph. And I feel like I'm deceiving both of you. I always feel like an unfaithful slut. Then finish with Ralph. You still live here. I can't. He still hopes that we can get back together. And to some extent, I still love him. Shit. Yes. For several weeks, little changed. Of course, she spent more and more time with me in public, and even introduced me to several of her friends, which meant a lot to me. But nothing fundamentally changed. She still saw Ralph at least once a week. It seemed to me that she was cheating on me, and it was killing me. It's time to do something radical. Call me an asshole, but I decided to use every resource at my disposal to win her over. It may not have been fair, but there was too much at stake. I knew that soon she would have two weeks of vacation. I guessed that neither she nor Ralph had money for anything fancy, but she started planning a few short trips with both of us. Tina? The mood was relaxed. We were cuddling on my couch, watching some nonsense on TV. Yes? She answered absently. You have two weeks of vacation soon. Yes, starting next week. Well, I booked a little trip for us. Oh, have you already ordered something? Shouldn't you have asked? Maldive, I interrupted her. Yes, let's talk about injustice. What? She looked incredulous. Two weeks. Overwater bungalow. A wonderful resort. All inclusive. Woohoo. She tested the strength of my chest, hugging me. This. I can't believe it. Tom, you're crazy. I've always wanted. Seriously? Maldive? 
I know you already mentioned this. I felt a little smug. It definitely worked. The next night turned out to be, well, interesting, exhausting, in fact. Did I feel like I was buying it? Yes, perhaps a little. Did that stop me? No way, this was very important to my whole life, and I wasn't going to play fair. I wanted to win the woman I loved and was determined to do whatever it took. Tom, I'm so looking forward to this. Uh, what? I was planning to go to Hamburg with Ralph to visit his sister. It's clear. Maybe I should cancel. Do not dare. We'll just visit her later. It's just going to be a little hard to sell it to Ralph. These two weeks will be pure horror for him. Yes, I know. I managed to look sympathetic. But she somehow managed to convey this news to poor Ralph. I was glad I didn't have to be there. She unexpectedly spent the night after the conversation with Ralph in our apartment, and not in his, as originally planned. I didn't dare ask for details. And even better, she didn't get back to him until we flew to the Maldive. He may not have been happy, but I certainly was. The holiday was simply fabulous. I became the envy of all the men present. Of course, we had a lot of sex, enjoyed amazing food, and spent a lot of time diving, snorkeling, and our usual internal activity. I chose the calm mood that we usually experienced after a good portion of lovemaking. We sat comfortably in soft chairs on the terrace above the sea, the warm wind played with her hair. The situation was absolutely perfect, and I chose this moment to possibly ruin it. Tina, I was thinking. Yes, how about we spend all night in our apartment? Of course, I like it much better there, but what about Ralph? I really want us to be a couple in the usual sense of the word. Exclusively. I want you to be for me, only for me. She looked at me with an unreadable expression on her face. Oh, Tom, darling, I would really like to. But it still sounded a little hesitant. Just do it. But what about Ralph? You have to let him go. He needs to move on. You are blocking his future. She looked thoughtful. Maybe you're right, she answered after a while. It will be better for everyone. This constant pain must stop. You have to stop manipulating him. He's still hoping to get you back, and that's just cruel. To my relief, she nodded. I know you want to let him go gently. But you're only prolonging the pain. You are right. It looks like my adventure was a success. I was afraid that she would agree to end his suffering, but would do it by leaving me. Instead, she suddenly started crying. But it's so hard. This really is the end for Ralph and me. We wanted children. We wanted to grow old together. It's so cheap to leave it like that. Just for sex. Oh no, don't ever think like that. I'm not here with you just for sex. You are much more loved than he is. So caring, so compassionate, so nice, so mature. I enjoy having sex with you, but I wouldn't be here now if that was the only reason. I'm not that superficial. I love you just the way you are. I enjoy spending time with you. I need you by my side. Me too. Okay, Tom. From this day on, you are my man, my only man. You have exclusive rights to this body and this soul. Of course, it sounded corny, but there were tears in her eyes, which made it very believable. I was also touched, and with a broken voice, I was able to simply say yes without embarrassment. Fortunately, I was not present for the final confrontation with Ralph. I really didn't envy the poor bastard. Slowly losing a woman like Tina over such a long period of time must have been pure torture. She later told me that it was truly terrible. He cried, he begged, he was on his knees, he promised never to see another woman again, he claimed that he never had sex with her. The saddest thing is that the latter could even be believed. We were slowly destroying this man's sexuality. She returned, still very worried, with the remains of her clothes. No, there was no sex that evening. I just hugged her and helped her get through her crying spells. So did I win? Yes. Was it that easy? No. The problem was that she was still in love with another man and that we both started out as cheaters. From a moral point of view, our relationship was on shaky ground. But most importantly, some suspicions remained. Was she meeting with Ralph behind my back? Does she miss him? Maybe he was able to turn her on again, 
now that he was a lover and not a cuckolded husband. So I kept an eye on her from time to time and, to my horror, discovered that she was indeed still dating Ralph. But I did not have access to his apartment, and I could not constantly monitor it. If she found out I was even doing this, all hell would break loose and I might lose her again. So my options were limited and all I saw were a few questionable lunch breaks that didn't even involve a proper kiss. And yet the fear and jealousy remained. What if she cheated on me with this handsome guy? The thought was unbearable. This fear intensified when, by coincidence, I met people who, as it turned out, knew her and were sure that she and Ralph were still a couple. I realized that the situation had completely changed. We were now living together as a couple, and Ralph was a threat to our relationship. I constantly lived in fear that his abilities in bed might improve if given enough time and motivation. If he became as good as me, I was afraid that she would no longer need me. He was prettier than me, bigger, and admittedly she still loved him. These thoughts may have been irrational, but they were still killing me. I even thought about these fears when we had sex, and it began to interfere with my pleasure. The karma credit plan was in full effect. The situation wasn't the best, but what could I do about it? Confront her, and risk her returning to Ralph's arms? No, it's best not to rock the boat. She didn't know that I suspected her of cheating and so far I was happy with life. At least it was acceptable. The problem was that Ralph tried to use a similar denial strategy when they were still a couple, and it didn't work for him. It drove me crazy. After weeks of growing self-doubt, I almost couldn't take it anymore. Tom, dear, what do you think about having a baby? Wow, that was unexpected. Uh, Tina, I don't know. What, is it because we're not married? Tom, I'm ready to change this any time you want. No, not because of this. That's because you're still dating Ralph, and I'll never know who his father is. Well, that's it. The cat is out of the bag. I rocked the boat and waited anxiously for what would happen next. She just looked at me in shock and ran out of the room. Crap. Have I really lost her? A few minutes later, she returned with teary eyes. I'm so sorry, Tom. Of course, I will stop dating him at least without you. Without me, I don't like guys. What? Do you suspect me of still having sex with him? Well, yes, sort of like that. You can't be that stupid. I promised you to be only yours, and I intend to keep this promise. Yes, I saw him several times at lunch. I think I owe it to him, but I'm faithful to you. For some reason, I believed her. I'm sorry, Tina, but you have to admit, given our history, Yes, I'm a cheater. I have to live with this stigma. But I never actually lied to Ralph. Of course, I didn't tell him about meeting you, but I never told him an outright lie. And now I tell you that I am faithful to you. Now I felt like a fool. But at the same time, I felt like the whole weight of the world had been lifted off my shoulders. We were both still paying the price for cheating on Ralph. So you can stop seeing him. Certainly. Do you think I should? And if you can, then why haven't you done it yet? I should have assumed you still loved him. Tom, honey, Ralph, and I have been together forever. We and everyone else believed that we were made for each other. Our future together was never in doubt. We were always friends. We took each other's cherries. We were destined to grow old together. I always thought I loved him. It turned out that to some extent, yes, but only when I met you did I learn about real, true love. And it's not just about sex. I am connected with Ralph by something like camaraderie, friendship, affection. I like him, and you can say that I love him like a brother. But with you, I feel deep, true love. So of course I can stop seeing him if I have to. You won. I continued to date him more out of a sense of duty than out of love. I think he loves me as much as I love you, and I tried to let him go gently. It's clear. Wow, talk about a feeling of relief. Don't you think that in this way you are making his life even more difficult? He's probably still hoping to get you back. This must be torture for him. Yes, you're probably right. I even knew about it, but I was too weak to finally break up with him. Fine. Although it was probably inappropriate, I smiled widely. She finally and truly became mine. I felt muscles in my body relax that I didn't even know I had. 
A feeling of satisfaction washed over me. Tom, is it okay if I see him from time to time? Of course, without sex. And in your presence, she quickly added. Well, given your history, I'd rather you didn't. I admit, this would make me sick. But I understand if you feel like you have to do it. Thank you very much. For allowing this and for giving me for secret meetings with him. Well, what else could I do? In our group of serial cheaters, I could hardly blame her for such a small thing, could I? In the following weeks, we spoiled each other to the fullest. We were super attentive during sex. They bought each other small gifts, brought coffee in bed in general, everything that was needed. My motivation was to make sure she didn't look at Ralph anymore. Her motivation, I don't know, maybe a feeling of guilt, claim your rights, make sure I don't suspect anything. Whatever it was, it was funny for a while, but also over the top. After a while, we both slowed down a little, and our relationship relaxed and turned into a stable, long-term one. We were sitting at breakfast on a beautiful Saturday morning. Yes, Tina, I said unexpectedly. What? I agree. Honey, what are you talking about? You proposed to me, remember? Her face lit up like the sun. Seriously? Would you marry a cheater like me? Tina, there is no need to raise this topic again and again. We both don't have the best history in this regard. Boy, you won't regret this. I just grinned like an idiot. I will remain faithful to you. You don't have to be afraid. I know. But I didn't know. This is probably what she promised Ralph to. I'll make sure you don't regret this, Tom. Six years and two children later, I still have no regrets. She still spoils me, just as I spoil her. But I'm not a fool either. Without discussing it, we made the smartphone tracking feature available to each other. I still discreetly check her email and phone from time to time. So far she has proven her loyalty. Our marriage began with infidelity, and this flaw will never go away. Officially, Ralph accepted the situation. To my chagrin, he often visits us with his new wife and their young son. We try our best to be cordial with each other, but there is a certain tension in the room when he is around. I also see secret longing glances in her direction, and they bother me very much. Keeping our shared track record in mind, I do everything I can to keep her happy, sexually and otherwise. Her being unhappy with her sex life led to her leaving Ralph, and I wouldn't want to be in that situation. So I'm under a lot of pressure, but as long as I have her, I can live with it. Despite nagging and probably unfounded doubts, I'm finally starting to believe it. I won the woman of my dreams from a much more attractive man, but I did it at the cost of my moral standards. Was it worth it? Hell yes. Subscribe to our channel so that your love doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think click to the next one.